Federal government plans to import levy to finance AFDB World Bank obligations. Nigeria needs 3.7 trillion naira annually to tackle poverty, says World Bank latest report. And Securities and Exchange Commission reminds capital market operators on renewal of registration. This is Business Express on the network service of the NTA, and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Musa Abubakar, your guide. Well, a Merry Christmas to you out there. Well, let's begin by telling you the capital market operators and the general public have been informed that the annual renewal of registration for year 2023 will commence from January 1st, 2023 and expected to end on January 31st, 2023. This was stated by the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, in a recent circular release to the capital market. The commission said that the annual renewal of registration of capital market operators which is aimed at ensuring that only fit and proper persons operate in the Nigerian capital market. The SEC had in 2021 reintroduced periodic renewal of registration by capital market operators, which was promise or premise on the need to have a reliable data bank of all CMOS registered and active in the Nigerian capital market to provide updated information on operators in the Nigerian capital market for reference and other official purposes by local and foreign investors, other regulatory agencies and the general public. The renewal was also introduced to increasingly rescue incidences of unethical practices by CMOS, such as may affect investors' confidence and impact negatively on the Nigerian capital market, as well as to strengthen supervision and monitoring of CMOS by the Commission. In line with the Commission's rules and regulations, all CMOS are to complete the process of renewal of registration for the year 2023 on or before 31st January 2023 through the registration renewal portal eportal.sec.gov.ng. The beneficiaries of the Federal Government Economic Sustainability Program have been commending the initiative, describing it as one of the best economic revival policy of the present administration. They expressed these views during the impact assessment workshop of the initiative in Bini City, Edo State. Good luck in that in Daini reports. It was at the advent of the deadly coronavirus when economic activities were seemingly brought to a halt that the federal government put up the team chaired by the vice president, Professor Yemio Shimbajo, in an effort to safeguard lives and ensure livelihood is sustained. The federal government, through the program, strengthened the various sectors, including individuals with funding as life support in form of grants. This gesture, the Ministry of Budget and National Planning say, was deliberate. The beneficiaries, while giving their assessment, appealed for its sustenance. I was privileged to benefit from a three-day training that was organized by the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Technology. Those who have employed and asked us, are you not going to continue this program? We got three months and three months. Minister of State Budgets and National Planning, Prince Clem Agba, pleased with the testimonies, disclosed the next phase of the program. The plan continuity bill, uh, which uh, we're working on, and also some of those 10 government policies 
Once we are able to change all of that with the implementation mechanism that has been set up with His Excellency the Vice President leading, I believe that uh, we will be better off. The minister, however, urged Nigerians to take advantage of the iMark mobile application designed to promote transparency and accountability in the implementation of annual budget. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. The federal government has initiated plans to introduce 0.5% levy on imported goods to raise funds to meet its obligation to the African Development Bank, the World Bank, and other multilateral organizations. This is contained in a document titled Invitation to a One-Day Public Hearing and Submission of Memoranda on the 2022 Finance Bill released by the House of Representatives Committee on Finance. The new levy was introduced into the 2022 Finance Bill of Section 13 for Customs, Excise and Tariff. The document read in part, in addition to extant customs uh, duties and other approved charges, a levy of 0.5% is hereby imposed on all eligible goods imported into Nigeria from outside Africa to finance capital contributions, subscriptions and other financial obligations to the African Union, African Development Bank, African Export Import Bank, ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development and other multi Lateral institutions as may be de designated by regulations issued by the minister responsible for finance. The World Bank has said that it will cost Nigeria 3.7 trillion naira to eliminate poverty, which has been on the rise in the country. The financial institution stated this in its census report for the Nigeria Country Economic Memorandum charting a new course which was released this month. The World Bank also noted that the 3.7 trillion naira is lower than what Nigeria already spends on petrol subsidies yearly. The report says Nigeria has the potential and resources to accelerate growth and reduce poverty. In a context of weakened economic growth, widespread poverty, deepening inequality and political turbulence, Releasing, realizing the government's ambition of lifting roughly 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by 2030 is challenging. And now to our discussion segment, the federal government of Nigeria established the National Social Investment Programme, NSIP, in 2016 to tackle poverty and hunger across the country. Programs such as NPAR, Conditional Cash Transfer, and Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, JEEP, under the NSIP, focuses on ensuring a more equitable distribution of resources to vulnerable populations, including children, youth, and women. Since 2016, these programs combined are said to have supported more than 4 million beneficiaries countrywide through a fair and transparent process. Our focus on the program is social investment and joining me is a political economist, Aliu Elias. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me. Well, we already have a working budget for all uh, for economic development. Right. Why then do we need uh, social investments? Uh, very, very important. Uh, most countries have such in intervention to support the needy. You know, uh, you agree with me that social government in has been doing it over time. Let's even look at the uh, Fourth Republic during the Olusha Gobasanjo administration. We are what we call National Poverty Education Program mm. called NAPEP. Yeah. You see, that was, and that's why the name actually uh, came about that time. During the uh, era, where we have wealth creation, and during the uh, Olusha, I mean, during the uh, Jonathan era, mm. we do have what we call subsidy reinvestment program that was focused on you win youths are uh, uh, with innovation in Nigeria, and this government as well as also came up with uh, uh, what we call a national social investment uh, uh, program. Now, this social investment program is about four. We have CCT, conditional cash transfer. Mm. We have government enterprise, Jeep. Mm. You know, we have uh, Empower. And we have uh, homegrown uh, uh, feeding. Now, these are good program. But the fact is, how far has it transformed? Mm. How, far, how far has it moved Nigeria from that poverty level to uh, a well-being level? That's the question. And like the last uh, analysis by Nigeria uh, Bureau of Statistics, we mm. do have 
poverty in a different dimension. So in Sokoto, we could have issue of uh, feeding. In other places, it could be health-related uh, uh, problem. In other words, it could be even shock. You know that is affected insecurity so poverty is multi-dimensional so the journey to look at it and tackle poverty state by state community by community like a good example I, when i was in rwanda i recall in rwanda they have a strata they understand the very poor the poor you know the middle class the rich you know Nigeria, we don't have such statistics that could help us to achieve that and in answering uh, and reducing poverty there they make sure that every people that is in poverty line are total poverty, deep poverty, mm. are giving free education. In fact, they give them some of them free cow. So we the aim that over time, you know, and it's also redistributive in nature. If you agree with me, because if you distribute, distribute wet, it will kill inequality and Nigerians will be better for it. So it's a good one, I agree. But how far has it moved Nigerians from poverty level to level? Looking at the last statistics as well, mm. that says that about 1.3 million Nigerians are in poverty. That's about mm. 63%. It's so appalling. So we need to do something very urgent. Okay, the, the World Bank noted that uh, 3.7 trillion naira is needed to fight poverty. Then why then spend so much on petrol su subsidy? Petrol well, subsidy. The, the fact is that we, we, we don't run uh, total private, uh, uh, I mean, governments. Government also want to create a suko for mm. people. However, at what point are we going to re remove it? It's stated that by June, it will be removed. Well, it's fine if it is removed and bring about uh, a betterment of citizens. Because who are you subsidizing fuel for? It's just purely for the rich. How many poor person has a car on the streets? So it's purely for the, uh, for the rich. So we must do something about that. And it's even affecting our recurrent, I mean, Capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. If you look at our expenditure in this uh, current uh, budget that is about to be signed, mm -hmm. you will notice that much more of it is going to subsidy uh, uh, debt, uh, subsidy uh, debt payment. You yeah, understand, and also so. going for recurrent. It's only about 5.7 or so mm -hmm. that is going for people that involve social infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about social infrastructure. Looking at road, you're looking at health care, you're looking at education. So that patri sum is what the whole Nigeria is relying on. So mm -hmm. we must remove subsidy to have a better Nigeria for citizens. Okay, the, I don't know whether you are aware of the National Social Investment uh, Program Bill. Uh, it's said to have passed a second reading and it seeks to establish the National Social Investment Program Agency for Management and Implementation of the uh, National Social Investment Program. What do you make of it? That should be a very good score for the federal government if it can be established. Because our problem is politics of man sort and inconsistency in what mm. we do. So like I said, from uh, first report about 21 years ago, if we have focused on one policy by now to have manifest and see it in Nigeria. So now, by government institutionalizing NSIP, it's a very good thing to happen. That means it will create consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, it will also create source for the fund because the issue is that every government will just say, let's do this. No. By that, it is stated that 5% will be dedicated to poverty reduction, NSIP, and there will be an agency that will manage. Another thing we have is it must be, it must be domesticated into different states because federal government cannot be fighting poverty and the states are not doing anything about it. So it must transcend from federal government to them. So if every agency in every state also earmark 5% of the budget, you know, for poverty reduction, it will go a long way because there will be monitoring mm. at you and it will also show over time on people. Okay, if, if passed, how do you see it moving 100 million Nigerians out of poverty? Well, I think it's a projected and uh, I think government is over ambitious about that. Of course. Because when you say 100 be. million by 2030, mm. what are we doing now? That's the question. 2030 to now is about eight years. Mm. So what are we doing to make sure that we could? Because it's much more of institutional base. You know, when you talk about poverty also, we are not talking about poverty line. You know, money poverty line. We're talking about multi-dimension uh, now poverty. That's the major issue. Health care problem, education. You know, if you look at even HDI index, mm. per capita income of Nigerians is very, very small compared to move them to standard. It has been moved to two or uh, two fifteen a uh, dollar per day. How many? With the value of the dollar now, how many person can afford that to eat in a day? And also the uh, how many people are going to school? The, uh, the school expectancy, these are the things we are looking for. Then ultimately life expectancy can i say as a nigerian i'm sure i wish a particular year in this i know be that as a without looking at the natural i mean first majority but let's mm. look at natural thing how many of us can also say yes at least 55 years uh, is assured for every nigeria and yeah. it, though, there's a function of many things that need to come together mm. education health 
social, you know, and inclusion itself. So these are the things we need to really do more in. But how do you see uh, government playing part in the selection and processes of this uh, uh, particular social investment uh, uh, program? Uh, isn't it, uh, would it be advisable for the private sector to now come in? Because when you talk about selection, when people be selected, their loved ones and things like that. So how do you see government part in this whole process? Should I it be a private public thing or should it be a public thing or something like I that? I think that's the major uh, shortfall of this uh, uh, social investment. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, Nigeria is a political terrain where mm -hmm. all, all politicians want to score uh, by saying, telling people, promising people that you will be moved out of uh, mm. a poverty. By, mm. by the time all this poverty scheme came about, mm. they will be just looking for it so that I will take it to my community. Yeah. Perhaps the person you are giving may not be the person in need. Yeah. But that's why you see that most NGO do, used to do what we call need assessment. Yeah. So if there is a proper need assessment, you identify that this person, their problem is not education anymore, their problem is health related issues. You know, mm. you can identify this, this thing. So that's why government needs to internalize it. I agree with them because part of the advantage of passing this bill of nsip is that there will be a pattern you know there will be an agree a uh, rules and regulation a procedure to identify that this person is poor not somebody that is earning about eighty thousand that got to hear about ten thousand and is also trying to collect ten thousand mm -hmm. that is meant for people in the core rural area that does not even have a bank account because people that survive with ten thousand naira in a month i i, I can tell you may not have a bank account that you can transfer to. That's and with, right. with this uh, current BVN, you can easily tackle, get to know who has what and how the money comes in. So Nigeria government should involve private sector in terms of partnership mm. because even the international organization want to see you uh, implementing it to the benefit of the masses before they will give you those things. Most NGOs are there supporting people. They always conduct need assessment and identify if this person truly need this uh, uh, support. Okay, what's your assessment of uh, our National Social Investment Program? Well, uh, for now, you know, it has uh, about four uh, four areas. Yeah. So now, looking at that four area, you could see that one is for majorly for the youth. Yeah. You no, know, one is majorly for market women. Mm. One majorly is for uh, children uh, in the school. Yes. No, we we'll see that by segmenting it, it's a very good one. But it must be institutionalized so that over time, and we must have a proper record. Mm. I could see in that NSIP also, there's what they call poverty register, mm. where we get to know who and who benefit uh, over yeah. time yeah. and where to go. And we can also trace. If the person has actually moved from poverty, you know, a particular level of poverty uh, to the other, I think it's a very good thing that government is coming up with uh, NSIP. Uh, and NSIP. What and we urge the think? National Assembly to do well to mm. pass it. Because before the, the, this uh, night assembly, it, it can be done. Mm. This is major thing that concerns majority of Nigerians. So it should be taken with utmost seriousness. So, uh, the National Assembly should do well by making sure they work quick on it and make it a reality for poor Nigerians. But, but really the funding, uh, when I looked at the funding, it, uh, it worries me because uh, the funding is supposed to come from budget allocation and 5% of recovered and repatriated funds. Is, is that actually enough when you look at sustainability now? We are looking at the future now. Well, before now, I don't think government actually have a court uh, uh, understand a clear understanding of how to source the fund but it's yeah. fair better now because i believe it's subject to change over time okay. so if we say five percent of budget it's a huge sum that can do something and also you can see that we get to hear repatriation of a different fund i think it's not a bad way to start from this source over time we can do that remember before when we have uh, maybe uh when, when our budget is focusing on maybe 100 100 uh, uh dollars per barrel and we get to get more before that's what we used to 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 do that maybe from sovereign wealth fund and what have you but now it has the clear uh, understand that budgetarily every state and federal government must make sure they earmark five percent of the budget and any repatriated fund should be used it's not a bad idea it's a good start i want to celebrate them for that for introducing that but national assembly should do the needful so that it will not be what the other government will also restart again we should have it so that every policy that is aiming to i mean reduce poverty has focus and we can really track it and see the manifestation on nigerians thank you very much uh aliu elias uh, political economist thank you for sharing your thought with us thank you for having me now uh, moving on let's take a trip to the commodities market
Let's now join Boss of the Abel for details on NGX Weekend. Heavy NGX All Share Index and Market Capitalization for Week Ended 23rd December 2022, appreciated by 0.79% to close the week at 49,706.09 basis points and 27.074 trillion naira. All other indices finished higher, with the exception of NGX ASM and NGX Sovereign Bond indices, which closed flat at a turnover of 860.9 million shares worth 16.1 billion naira in 14,502 deals was traded in the week by investors on the floor of the exchange. The construction real estate industry followed with 302.2 million shares worth 927 million naira were traded in 261 deals. The third place was the consumer goods industry trading in the top three equities, UPDC Real Estate Investment Trust, FBN Holdings and Guarantee Trust holding company they jointly accounted for 440.2 million shares worth 3.015 billion naira in 2038 deals a total of 1.3 million units of exchange traded product ttps valued at 6 million naira were traded in 37 deals as well as a total of 28,007 units of federal government bonds valued at 27.1 million naira were traded in 15 deals. 41 equities appreciated in price during the week, 17 equities depreciated in price, while 99 equities remained unchanged. Boss said the able business express. Well, there's a hope inside for 14 local government areas of Plateau State that have been without electricity supply, as well as encumbrances impeding the construction of Mike Erie Pangshin uh, transmission line have been resolved. Minister of Power Abubakar Aliu mandates the contractor to deliver the project in the next three months. Joshua Jito reports. 122 kilometers Makeri Pangshin transmission line to provide electricity to 14 local government areas in Plateau State. Contracts awarded 10 years ago, but there were challenges that delayed its completion. Issues of right of way, insecurity, and inadequate funding stalled the project over the years. The intervention of federal and Plateau state governments raises hope for the project as all issues resolved and contractor back to site. It is a quick win to all of us because we have a lot of stranded investment at Pangshin. 2 by 40 MBA transformer has been installed but no line to power it. Uh, if we can achieve that, it means TCN will add its willing capacity as we are approaching 10,000 megawatts. From the Shinko side until where we are now, the work has been done, we are ready to string and I can tell you we are good to go. 365 towers are to be erected along the line, but federal government raises concern on continuous vandalization of erected towers, which the state government says will be tackled head on. Whoever wants to vandalize it, uh, we'll see it as the biggest crime to the people of Plateau State. Two senatorial districts are cut off completely. What would this thing you have done is the biggest Christmas gift you are giving to the people of Plateau State. With three months deadline to deliver the project, the transmission line is part of federal government interventions nationwide to increase the willing capacity of the transmission arm of the value chain. Joshua Ojito. Well, that's it. Business Express returns Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. I am Musa Enjoy your Boxing Day.